This is Gatineau Park, and we're on the Trans-Canada Trail at Meech Lake. We've come here to solve a mystery. In the early 1900s, residents on the lake noticed a strange phenomenon. Some days they'd wake up and their boathouses would be six feet underwater. Other days they'd wake up and they'd be six feet from the water. Little did they know just how weird the explanation was. The mystery of Meech Lake involves a secretive scientist who accidentally created an industry. This is Canadiana. And this is Thomas Wilson. He was born to a farming family, but he had a flair for invention. Instead of carrying on the family business, he started obsessively pursuing scientific experiments. And while looking for a cheap way to produce pure aluminum, he accidentally wound up with this. This is calcium carbide. It's heavy, it's colorless, it kind of smells like garlic. And Wilson was about to use it to change the world. At the time, nearly every lamp on Earth was lit with coal gas. But by mixing calcium carbide with water, Wilson produced acetylene gas, which burns 10 times brighter. Acetylene had been produced before, but there was just no demand for it. But Wilson wasn't about to let that stop him. He had two aces up his sleeves. One, his accidental process was much cheaper. And two, he decided that if there was no demand, he would just make demand. Wilson and his business partner lobbied hard for the use of acetylene lights, and it worked. Soon, they were everywhere. They were used to light homes as headlights and as lighthouse beacons. Acetylene lamps became ubiquitous in the mining industry for decades to come. Many cavers still swear by them to this day. Wilson was set for life. He moved to Ottawa and opened several carbide plants. Like this one on Victoria Island. He became a local celebrity. Carbide Wilson, they called him. He was even the first guy in Ottawa to own a car. He had a sprawling house on Metcalf Street and a 30-acre summer estate just across the border in Chelsea, Quebec, still maintained by the government today. But it's an entirely different building that we're interested in. Wilson was paranoid, worried his celebrity would have competitors watching his every move. So he bought up a big swath of land around Meech Lake and built himself an honest-to-God secret laboratory. He'd already created one industry from scratch, now he would revolutionize another from right here. In 1919, this was the site of Wilson's second big quest, fertilizer. He discovered that calcium carbide could also be turned into a powerful fertilizing agent. And if he could perfect the process, like he had with acetylene, he could corner the agricultural industry. He was willing to gamble his entire fortune on it, taking out huge loans against his patents from the American tobacco king, J.B. Duke. His new venture would be big and expensive. And this time, there was an added twist. He would produce it using hydroelectric power, one of his big late life passions. That's why he built his secret laboratory on a river. Risking everything, he dove in head first, damming and undamming the river to generate enough power for his experiments. And what do you think happened to Meech Lake when he did? Look around and you can see how things went for Wilson. But not because of an angry and soggy backlash. It's actually a sadder story than that. Wilson's theories were accurate. His experiments were working. His commitment had paid off, and through his tireless efforts, this laboratory was actually producing above his own predictions. But no one was biting. He just wasn't having the same luck he'd had with acetylene gas. He burned through his loans. His patents and other assets were eaten up by his debts. He nearly went bankrupt. And that's why today I'm standing in a ruin. Carbide Wilson's empire was crumbling. But he was never one to wallow in failure. Wilson sprang right into his next venture, hydroelectric power again, on a much grander scale. 
he headed to New York to scare up capital for a massive project in Labrador. Sadly, he wouldn't live to see his new dream come true. It was there, in New York, that Carbide Wilson's mind-bogglingly productive life finally caught up with him. He died suddenly of a heart attack at the age of 55. His legacy is invisible and enormous. Acetylene was used in lights all over the world and is still used in oxyacetylene welding and cutting today. Calcium carbide is still used to make compounds for solvents, plastics, synthetic rubber, and fiber. One of Wilson's original patents was sold to a syndicate that would become the Multinational Union Carbide Corporation, employing thousands of people. And as for Wilson's final dream, that hydroelectric project in Labrador, well, it was 55 years after he died before it got off the ground, but it was finally realized as the Churchill Falls Hydroelectric Generating Plant. It's still one of the largest in the world. Carbide Wilson also had a connection to the most famous moment in the history of Meech Lake. In the 1980s, his old lake house played host to politicians from across Canada as they came together to try to hammer out the Meech Lake Accord, trying to get Quebec to finally sign on to the Canadian Constitution. But in the end, the Accord failed. The final nail in the coffin came when Elijah Harper, an OG Cree member of Parliament, stood up in the Manitoba legislature and refused to grant unanimous consent. You can learn more about that incredibly important moment in Canadian history by following the links that we'll post in the description below. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. We have lots more stories to tell you, and to do it, we'll need your support. You can become a patron on Patreon, or you can give us a one-time donation through PayPal. Every bit helps. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, where we're at This Is Canadiana. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Adam Bunch, and I'll see you next time on Canadiana.